this is Alan Elliott and this is tutorial 15 cleaning data part 2. In this tutorial we're, is, we're going to look at a continuation of the cleaning a messing data set example beginning on page 151. We're going to discover how to fix some additional category problems, discover and fix problems with quantitative data, and consider some administration issues. The first variables we're going to look at are married and single. The survey asks respondents their marital status in two different ways. Are you married? Yes, no. Are you single? Yes, no. It seems like these should be the opposite, but as we're going to discover, the data doesn't seem to really support that. If we use the code discover1.sas, notice that it's a proc freak of the data cleaned so far, and we're going to look at tables of our count kind of variables, married, single, top reason, race, gender, and how arrived. The first ones we're going to look at are married and single. So these are results are from Frock Freak. Notice here that if you look at single and married, which should maybe be the opposite of one another, they really aren't. And so we need to decide how are we going to reconcile this problem. This may be something that the researcher should be asked, which of these two variables is the most appropriate to use. Another variable that's count data is the uh, reason for coming. Uh, the answer here should have been from the survey uh, item one, two, or three. However, when we receive the data, we see that there's some odd uh, entries, three and one, 1 1.5, and so forth. Uh, these variables, this, these numbers have to be dealt with because they would make it hard to analyze. So let's look at a couple of ways we might fix this. It's in the file called messy3.sas. These fixes are in there. First of all, we're going to drop the married variable. The researcher decided that the single variable is the appropriate one to use. And for top reason, uh, we're just simply going to say if uh, someone didn't answer the required one, two, or three as an answer, we're going to set it to missing because we don't know really what their answer should have been. Once we make corrections to variables like this, we might want to go back to discover1.sas, rerun it, and make sure that the fixes are, uh, have taken place. Now let's look at some quantitative variables uh, by looking at the program in discover2.sas. Instead of proc freak, this time we're using proc means to display information about the numeric or quantitative variables. Uh, in this case, we get the table below uh, we're not really interested in subject and single, even though they're numeric variables. We're interested in education, satisfaction, and temp for this particular exercise. Notice here that there's problems with, both, with all three of them. Education, a uh, maximum of 99 is probably not correct. Satisfaction score, negative 99, that's a problem. And temperatures range from 36 to 1,018, obviously not correct. Another thing we should notice is that age doesn't even show up as a numeric variable, and if we go back and look at our data set, we see that it is a character variable, so we need to uh, fix that as well. So let's look at the file called messy4.sas, which contains some of these fixes. First of all, we set education to a missing value if it's 99. Uh, we discover by uh, talking to the researcher that if a temperature is less than 45, we can uh, assume that it's uh, Celsius, and so we can convert it to Fahrenheit using this formula. And we also found out that the temperature stored as 1018 or 1018 should have been 101.8. And satisfaction, the negative 99, was an impossible value, so we set that also to missing. Now to deal with the age problem, of the uh, variable, we use the input function to convert the character age into a numeric variable that we're going to call age in. Uh, we're going to drop the old age variable and give the new one a label. Note that when you convert a variable from character to numeric, to numeric you can't use the same variable name, so that's why we chose age in to represent the numeric version of the age variable. So now that age in is numeric, we rerun discover2.sas to see if our problems have been fixed. And for education, satisfaction, and temp, they have been fixed, but now we see that age in is out of range from a minimum of zero to a maximum of 220. Again, checking with the researcher, we find that uh, all of the subjects in this uh, survey should have been uh, 10 or less than age 99, so we have an if statement we could use to correct that. So at this point, let's do this as an exercise. Pause 
the tutorial, enter this new uh, if statement to make the correction on age in, and then return after you've made that correction. When we rerun the discover2.sass again, we now see that age in uh, is within the uh, bounds that we would assume, and all of the other information is also within bounds. Now, at this point, let's talk about uh, just a couple of administrative issues. Uh, first of all, as we've seen here, statisticians often get data provided to them by researchers or from online surveys or from electronically gathered data. Before we make any data corrections, as we've seen here, we need to determine who has the authority, knowledge, and responsibility for making these change decisions. Oftentimes, it's the researcher and not the statistician. We also need to keep track of any of these changes for an audit trail in case there are questions about why these, uh, uh, why these changes were made or how they were made sometime in the future. And that's the end of tutorial 15. Our next topic, again, is a continuation of this exercise, Cleaning Data, Part 3.